fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, my mother was self-sufficient until she came here to die. And then she never stepped in the house. Now just think about that. Your mother living here and she never came into the house to say hello, have a meal, have a cup of coffee. Just think about that. My mother was afraid of me. I still remember the day before she died, we're in the cottage. We had two full-time nurses, 24-7, and we had a doctor here, just in case, you know. And she's whining about that. God damn it, shut the fuck up, mom. You're not gonna die. I leave, she's dead. I'd like to have that one back. That's one of my regrets, that I was so harsh. She says, I'm dying. I said, no, you're not, god damn it, you old bitch. And then she's, now see, you guys would have killed yourself. You couldn't have lived with that. I use it as strength. It makes me tougher. How many have seen the movie 300? You know the one fact that they don't come, uh, bring out in the movie 300? Does anybody know? All you learned men of the world. Scintilla, that's not the right word. A molecule of knowledge. Because you only absorb the things that are in, within your comfort zone. The things that make you slappy fucking happy. Yay! You fucking cunts, worms. Back to Steve Jobs. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, wasn't gay. Go ahead. He didn't give a fuck whether he was liked. <laughs> That's an understatement. That's, just like when that girl said, she thought she had the, she sitting right there. She had the traits of the uh, Steve Jobs. And they say I leaped. And she's a senior. She's now retired from J.P. Morgan. And now got a big... She ran, uh, I think her last job was she ran J.P. Morgan's European Wealth Desk. So she knows everybody that's anybody. She was the one that still asked uh, Andreas Mueller, where does the equity come from? Remember that little Asian girl? I can, uh, well, because I've seen these tapes a lot of times, I know what they're gonna say three sentences before they're gonna say it. And I've told you, somebody's hand up, yes. Uh, you know, the, end of, the ending of that film was quite Hollywood uh, where everything was okay at the end, everyone liked each other, and he made up with his, uh, he made peace with his uh, ex-wife or partner. Not wife, never married, yeah. Whatever, little girl and business And they partners. didn't have a committed relationship, no. Jesus. I'm guessing that's completely inconsistent with reality. Yeah, I don't know the end of his life, is it just a Hollywood? That's a, that's a happy slappy, end. well, no, it wasn't happy slappy, but it was a happy as, as slappy as they could do. I told you the Waz Wozniak is a mentee, one of my mentees, and uh, he never took the top jobs because he, wanted to be like. He never took it. This is Wozniak. Zuckerberg's changed the world. Gates has changed the world. Ellison's changed the world. Do you want your kids to be like them? No. It's like when I'm uh, at Oxford or wherever I'm, uh, you know, how many want to have kids? And they go like this. And I says, um, do you want your kids to be like you? And everybody laughs. No. Raise your hand if you want your kids to be like your parents. Nobody raise their hand. Raise your hand if you want your uh, kids to be like your grandparents. Nobody raise their hand. And somebody in the back of the row jumps up. And says, I had a grandfather that had balls. And if you think when your kids get to be the age of reason, depends where that is. Remember, my parents and my dad had only one goal for me, for Danny to reach the age of reason. We don't know if it's going to be 20, 30, 40, or ever. Some would contend that I still haven't reached the age of reason. But I wanted to be like him, a real man, not a cunt. My dad wrote, uh, when I see these guys come out of the closet, God love them, you can be whatever you want to be. Uh, when they're 53 years old and their parents are 78, 80 like me, that's a tough to swallow. That's a motherfucker. Are you punk? contemplating that you're going to say something. Yeah, I wanted to get into this uh, idea of this reality distortion. Uh, the reality distortion. You mean like yours? Sure. So where do you see the line between, let's say, was a visionary and... No, there is no line. Strong it's an amorphous. It, 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 it's smudged. Uh, depending on where you are, who you're with, um, what, unfortunately for you guys, what book you might have read or what podcast you might have heard, uh, you're swayed. I've read six or seven books in my entire life. I've read those six or seven books six or seven times. I don't need anybody's fucking opinion. I'm not interested in opinion. But 99 or 98% of the world is. And so it depends what you read. It's like when you uh, um, uh, we have people that see the movie Barbie. I haven't seen the movie Barbie. They come out. Some people say, you know, it's about the Barbie doll. Yeah, whatever it's about. Uh, oh, wasn't that a nice time of life when you could, it was a simple and Barbie had tits and you know, ah, ah, what, is, what, is, what does that mean? And then we see you have people that walk out of the movie Oppenheimer. A couple of famous people have walked out of the movie Oppenheimer. And uh, because, you know, that, he changed the fucking world too. In fact, he changed the world more than all these other cocksuckers put together. Because now we know we can destroy the fucking world. But people didn't, the, a lot of people don't like the movie, apparently so. I, I can't wait to see it. The movie Oppenheimer, because, I mean, he's very matter of fact. There was a right way, uh, a wrong way, and Oppie's way. I mean, there is no, I mean, you're talking about weak minds, Dustin. And compared to me, everybody's weak. 
is the movie you saw about Jobs that he needed a blue shirt? Yeah, with a pocket, right? I said, wait, 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 wait. He didn't give a fuck, just go get, get me one. And the fucking computer didn't work. Is that the same movie? Now, I happen to have known, I knew the computer didn't work. And I couldn't spell computer back in those days. It doesn't matter if it works. So you still think it's like Apple that didn't work for the model. Now, there's a lot of smart people around. And I, I don't, I'm not one of the believers of this. There is a dual reality world. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But I know that some people are living in an amorphous of shit because they don't want to see reality, the real reality, the real truth. I do believe that because I've been doing this long enough that I know, you know, whatever you're smoking to be happy. I don't know how anybody in this room can be happy, even the most successful. Slappy, happy, dinner. You know, Barbie doll happy. I, I don't know. It's because you've got low expectations of yourself. That's why anybody in this fucking room could ever be marginally happy. Low expectations. And how did you get to low expectations? Well, I don't need to beat that to death anymore. Some of you had no expectations. You didn't have parents. You didn't have this. And if you had, and, and you know, you were abused. You know. I was physically abused by my dad, beat me. He would have gone to jail. He's anything else about jobs. Okay, oh yes sir. He imposed his will upon the world. He imposed his will. Just like Genghis Khan, just like Hitler. I mean, was he interested if he was right? No. And when they brought him back to Apple, I mean, uh, the guy that hired, uh, he hired a CEO, brought him back, uh, who I happen to have known back in the day. Uh, it was one of the happiest days of his life because it was like, you know, uh, we were wrong and you were right, but that's not how they, that's not the language, but he knew he was right and they had been wrong to throw him out. The best vindication, the best revenge is success. The very best vindication, the very best is super success. Yeah, in the back. He was as selfish as he possibly could be. I only want, if I could, I've already read, written my epitaph. I've already written my gravestone. And we have three versions of my gravestone. It depends which one Sally wants to use. He was selfish to the end is one of them. But now <laughs> I'm forced to live through you vicariously, which is fucked. Because you're cunts. Took me 24 years to do something I thought I could do in six or seven. But I never gave up. I still be doing it. I mean, I do seminars till I was 106. Even if I didn't, I hit a trillion dollars. You would have given up and fallen away 25 years ago. Because you got to pay a mortgage. You got to pay a private uh, thing at the, where your kids go to school. You got to pay for your dementia, old crack asshole uh, mother. I wouldn't have done any of those things if it got in the way of my goal. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, my mother was self-sufficient until she came here to die. And then she never stepped in the house. Now just think about that. Your mother living here and she never came into the house to say hello, have a meal, have a cup of coffee. Just think about that. My mother was afraid of me. I still remember the day before she died, we're in the cottage. We had two full-time nurses, 24 seven, and we had a doctor here, just in case, you know? And she's whining about that. God damn it, shut the fuck up, mom. You're not gonna die. I leave, she's dead. I'd like to have that one back. That's one of my regrets, that I was so harsh. She says, I'm dying. I said, no, you're not, God damn it, you old bitch. And then she's now see, you guys would have killed yourself. You couldn't have lived with that. I use it as strength, makes me tougher. But Steve Jobs didn't give a fuck about anybody but himself. And I contend, and Steve Jobs would contend, and Bill Gates would contend, and all these guys that we read about, <sighs> that you can't be all you can be unless you love yourself first. Nobody loves Dan Pena more than Dan Pena. My wife, Sally, God love her, worships the ground I walk on. But her love is transitory compared to my love for myself. My first wife, same deal. She loved the ground I walked on, but her love for me was transitory compared to the, my love for myself. Most of you in this room don't like how you turned out. Most of you don't like looking at yourself in the fucking mirror. You just got used to it. So call a spade a shovel, as they say in Yorkshire. You can't reach the heights of Dan or whoever until you admit to yourself, I'm an also ran. Dan's right, I should have rolled down my fucking fat mama's leg. Until you come to terms with that, it was easy for Josh to come to terms with that. You understand? It was easy. And when I went to that fucking house, which I already explained to you, it still gives me shivers. Seeing all the little by threes, the kids teaching each other. And when that three-year-old took the vacuum cleaner, little shirt vacuum cleaner, and, and vacuumed up the rabbit shit, I almost fainted. I almost fucking collapsed. Three-year-olds, for those of you that have had a three-year-old, are you kidding me? Yes, sir. No, ma'am. From a three-year-old. And all of them, if I followed the progress, all of them have been success, are being successful today. All of them. One uh, chose, uh, one chose medicine. Actually, two chose medicine. Uh, one just uh, academics, uh, wants to teach. One's a fireman, and the rest are still in school, not. Anything else about Steve? Goodbye, YouTube.